Hey everybody, welcome back to Investing with Wesley. Today I want to talk to you about some of the important things that you need to watch out for when you're setting up your budget, and not only when you're setting up your budget, but when your budget's already established, what kind of spending most people do that causes them to break their budget and realize they won't make ends meet or they won't be able to reach their savings or investing goals. So let's talk about just that, the monsters inside of your budget and how you can slay them. Let's get into it. So guys, when it comes to your budget monsters, there's three big things that everybody spends money on that typically are overspent, even overspent to things like transportation costs, which a lot of millennials, including myself, think that's their largest expense. But in reality, these three budget monsters I'm about to talk about, each one individually shadows the average transportation cost that millennials pay. So number one I wanna talk about is food, specifically going out to eat not buying groceries and making food yourself. The average millennial spends over $2,000 a year going out to eat. And when you factor in this particular year and paying in things like delivery fees, the average has been about $1,500 additional dollars every year. Meaning that going out to eat with your friends, going to the bar, or staying home and quarantining and order delivering fee. On average in 2020, that has blown people's budgets from an average of $2,000 a year to now an average of $3,500 this year. Now granted, that's a yearly price and when broken down into months, that's not so bad as far as money goes. But considering that when you go out to a restaurant, they charge you three times what it actually costs to buy the groceries and make it yourself. And this is because that's how restaurants make money and make a profit. When operating a food business like a restaurant or a food truck, typically the prices they charge are based on the rule of three. And that says if it costs $5 for the ingredients, then they have to charge $15 for whatever they serve you. And this is $5 for the ingredients, $5 for the labor in making that food, and then an additional $5 in profit. So you can see that everything when you order, when you go out to eat, is three times as expensive as it should be. So if you just committed to learning a new skill like cooking, you could buy your own ingredients and experiment in your own kitchen and you can make the exact same meal. That probably will taste a lot better since you're getting fresher ingredients. And not only are you learning a new skill and the food you're eating tastes better and is fresher, but you're also saving two thirds of the money you would have blown this year just in food alone. The next budget monster I want to talk to you about is clothing. Now the clothing budget is simply hit and miss and it depends on what you do for a living and what kind of industry you're in. As an example, if you're a lawyer, then yes, I would expect you to have nice clothing like suits and ties because that's what you need to wear in a court case. And yes, good quality suits and ties are not cheap. When I say clothing is a budget monster, I'm talking more to the people that buy the latest fashion just to impress other people and just to flex on other people. When ruling out industry standard clothing and just factoring in your standard walk around town outfits, millennials on average spend over $2,000 a year buying clothes. Specifically, I think the number is like $2,010 per year, but it doesn't matter. Now guys, don't get me wrong. I don't expect you to go to Walmart and buy your clothing there, but I also don't expect you to blow your budget on things like Supreme and Gucci shirts. Those are pointless purchases. You're buying the brand, and although right now you might think that's cool and that's a flex, ultimately it is just a waste of money because no one cares what kind of brand you're wearing. I don't care what kind of brand suit a lawyer is wearing as long as he's wearing a professional tailored suit. The third budget monster I want to talk to you about, and it's probably the one we're going to spend the most time on, is coffee. And no, I don't mean brewing your own coffee at home, because brewing your own coffee at home will literally cost you anywhere from 10 to 40 cents per cup. It may cost you about 75 cents per cup if you decide to get special flavorings and blend it and try and make your own fraps or latte. What I mean by it when I say that coffee is a budget monster, is going out and getting coffee that is extremely overpriced at places like Starbucks, Dutch Bros, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, and Pete's Coffee. These are all retailers in the United States that do nothing but sell coffee and maybe some pastries here and there. A study found that 41% of millennials spend more on coffee than they do on their retirement every year. On average, millennials spend anywhere from $2,100 to $2,500 every year on Starbucks alone. 
That averages to $5.50 a day on coffee. Now, $5 every day doesn't really seem like a lot of money, especially when you also want to enjoy life and spend the money that you do have. But when you're spending $5.50 every day for a small-sized Frappuccino at Starbucks, when it could cost you about 80 cents for the same cup if you bought all the materials yourself and did it at home, that is a gross, gross burden on your budget. And it is easy to see why a lot of people break their budgets on these three things on coffee, clothing, and food. What I recommend is not giving up your Starbucks because admittedly, I enjoy Starbucks too. But what I would recommend is knowing the future value of your money and where it's going. Because the problem isn't enjoying nice clothing. The problem isn't enjoying a nice meal out with your friends. And it's certainly not Starbucks serving you coffee just to get your morning pep in your step. The problem is the undisciplined accumulation of minor purchases throughout your day, week, month, and year that add up to an extremely large number. And like I mentioned just a moment ago, knowing the future value of those dollars would exponentially increase the amount of money you would want to save and invest and stop spending every single day on those items. So what I recommend is go spend $5 on your cup of coffee at Starbucks. But also, every time you spend $5 at Starbucks, invest $5 into Starbucks themselves. Now, obviously, this won't work with every single business. If you go out and buy the new Xbox or the new PlayStation, I don't expect you to double that price and put it also into the stock market of the same company like Microsoft or Sony. But a new Xbox and a new PlayStation doesn't come out every year. What we're talking about is every year people spending minor amounts of money every day that add up to a great sum. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Wes, I have no intentions of spending $10 for a small frap. And I have bad news for those people saying this. And that's because they're already here. I'll put a picture on screen and a link in the description so that you could see exactly which article I read that says that certain high-end malls in high-end cities are already charging artisan coffee with a Starbucks recipe at the price of $10. Now, yes, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't live in any of those areas or I won't go to those shops. And, that's a, and that is a perfectly valid reason to never pay $10 for a cup. But I also want you to know that Starbucks has raised its prices almost every single year. The average price fluctuation of Starbucks coffee is a raise of 70% every 15 years. Now, obviously due to inflation and supply and demand, these prices can fluctuate all the time. I'm just telling you the averages. But what you need to know is based on these averages, in 2035, which is only 15 short years away, you're gonna be paying $9 per frap for a size small. And that's assuming that Starbucks keeps raising them at a consistent pace that they've been doing. What with the printing of money from the Fed and inflation about to go through the roof temporarily, you could see a dramatic increase in the prices of everything very shortly. So if you have zero intent on paying $10 for a cup of coffee, then the bad news is you won't be going to Starbucks for very long because pretty soon, even the small Frappuccinos will be $10 per cup. But guys, I think the issue is a lot of you watching don't know the future value of your money and therefore have no appreciation for what that dollar that you're spending could potentially turn into. Remember that it's discipline and consistency that are investors' best friends. It's having the discipline to save money where you know you can save and then investing consistently so you could see massive returns in the future. And because we're an investing channel and a finance channel, I wanna show you exactly what kind of future value your money could be worth if you just invested $5 a day into Starbucks rather than spend $5 a day at Starbucks. Or like I mentioned earlier, if you did both. So for starters guys, let's just talk in periods of five years. If you would have invested $5 a day in the Starbucks company with the ticker symbol of SBUX, and reinvested all the dividends that they would have given you, after five years, you would have put in of your own money $9,000, but your portfolio would have grown because of compounding interest to over $11,000. If you kept investing consistently $5 a day for another five years, making the total time invested 10 years, the amount of money you would have put in Starbucks 
would have been $18,000, but your portfolio would have grown to $41,000 in 10 years. And the number that really surprised me is 15 years. If you invested for 15 years consistently, $5 a day into Starbucks company, you would have over $110,000 invested and it would have only costed you $27,000 over the course of 15 years to get there. That is an astronomical return. So answer me this down below in the comments. Now that you know what $5 a day could get you in the future, and that future is not far away, that is only 15 years. Most investment channels, including some of the videos I've made, are talking career-long expectations of 40 plus years. This is 15 years to get you $100,000. If you're a young adult starting a family right now and you did this strategy with Starbucks investing $5 a day, by the time your kid turns 18, you will have enough money invested to liquidate everything and pay cash for your kid to go to college. And I know every millennial out there that has gone to college knows just how expensive it is and is terrified that they're gonna be paying student loan debts for the rest of their life. So just think about how great of a feeling that would be if you made the decision today of instead of spending a lot of money, to invest a lot of money. Think of how amazing that feeling would be being able to pay cash for your kid's college in the future just because you made a commitment to put an additional $5 every day into the company that you buy product from every day as well. I don't know about you, but to me that would be an amazing feeling. But we could also take it one step further. Remember all those numbers I said previous in the video? Clothing is about $2,000. Food is about $2,000 and coffee is about $2,000. And if you take the actual amounts, it is $6,108 a year that millennials spend on those three items alone. Now I wanna point out that the max contribution every year to a Roth or traditional IRA is $6,000. So you could max out an IRA and still have $108 left over to play with. And let me show you the power of compounding interest and what could happen if you invested that $6,100 as opposed to spent it. If we invested that $6,100 that you're gonna have every year by not spending money on pointless clothes, not spending money on coffee, and not spending money going out to eat. If you could instead invest that $6,100 for another 27 years, and I say this because currently I'm 27 years old. So if I invested that money for another 27 years, that would put me at 54. And the retirement age to take your money out of an IRA, whether it's Roth or traditional, is age 59 and a half. So I figured 27 years because the timeline adds up pretty well. But if you invested the $6,100 that you'd be saving every year into things like Starbucks, Microsoft, or even the S&P 500, you'd be amazed at what you would have in your retirement account waiting for you at the age of 54. If you invested all $6,100 just into Starbucks alone and reinvested the dividends it would give you, when you, rate, when you reached age 54, your portfolio balance would be about $6 million, assuming that they would grow at the same rate that they have been growing over the previous 27 years. If you invested those $6,100 every year into Microsoft, you would have $3.4 million. And if you invested it into the Home Depot company because maybe you're a contractor and you said, well, I don't get Starbucks, but I do go to Home Depot often, let me invest in that company. If you invested at Home Depot, you would have a balance of $1.2 million. But remember guys, we're also talking about a time frame of 27 years. But remember guys, we're also talking about a time frame of 27 years. Maybe you're already responsible enough to save for retirement. Maybe you're a lucky individual that has a pension or some form of employer contribution program to where you don't need to invest the $6,100. Well, going back to my young family example, if you're a young adult that has just recently started a family and you decided to do this strategy, when your kid reached the age of 27, you could gift them anywhere from one to six million dollars just by you investing in this. Now granted, this would mean that you wouldn't pay cash for their college because the money would have to stay in there to compound for the full 27 years. But you could easily have them take out student loans and then when they reach 27, with a degree in hand, you can give them a congratulation check of $6 million, have them pay off their student loans, and then live the rest of their life doing whatever they want. Because you took the initiative when they were a kid, you could break your generational curse and start the new generation off, your kid off, with $6 million 
to do whatever they want, to start a business, to travel, to retire early, to live life how life deserves to be lived. All because you decided not to spend $5 a day on coffee, but to invest that money for you and your family's future. And quite frankly, if that doesn't light a fire within you and motivate you to start investing for you and your family's future, then I don't know what will. Because these numbers are amazing and these numbers could change you and your family's life forever. And it is money that statistically you are already spending every year. So with that, I ask you, what's stopping you? Hey guys, thank you for making it into this video. I really hope you got value today in something I talked about, and I really hope that you got to see the future value of your money that you're spending every day in action, and just what it could do if you decided to save that money instead. If you wanna know more about investing, how to start investing, or just wanna next level your money game in general, then watch some of these videos beside me, because in those videos, I talk about just that. But until next time, guys, have a good one.